if you've had cecropia moths showing up for you a lot, or if you've dreamed of them, or if there's just something that you really love about them, stay tuned because we're going to really delve into the spiritual meaning of cecropia moth in this video. And I want to start with a beautiful message that cecropia moth gave to me to share with you. Dear me through the night, I am not afraid. In the quietude of night, in the wee morning hours, my wings unfurl. I feel my way by the light of the moon, I fly. The world is a magical place, and I, I am a prayer flag in the sky. When I explore a spirit animal, first thing I like to do is um, just find out little basic facts about it. So the Cecropia moth is the largest North American moth, and it has wingspans of up to seven inches. That is a big moth. Um, so it is considered a member of the silkworm family. Well, I'm not gonna go deeply into that there, but um, there are many, many spiritual connotations to silk. So um, that is something to look up and do some further research on if you uh, have a strong connection with Cecropia moth. All right, so let's look at the scientific name of the Cecropia moth, okay? It is Hylophora Cecropia, and this name is significant. So the, the name Cecropia means face with a tail, and this refers to a, a character from Greek mythology, King Cecrops. Cecrops is depicted with the lower body of a serpent or fish, and he's said to have founded the city of Athens. So we can also associate the goddess Athena with the Cecropia moth. I'll get into that in just a bit, okay? So King Cecrops was known as a wise and good king, and he instructed the early Athenians in how to be civilized, including the institution of marriage. He also forbade blood sacrifice, which was a thing back then, but he said no more. And to me, King Cecrops symbolizes the wisdom of a healthy intuition and an intellect or a mind that is both fully developed, but still maintains a healthy connection to nature, all right? Remember, he's got the bottom half of a fish, which is very primal, okay? Um, and also, King Cecrops represents wise leadership. So a lot of different rabbit holes we could go down here. Um, some people also see the face of a snake in the Cecropia moth due to its eye spots and tooth-like crescent moon shapes on its wings. So snake symbolism could also be relevant to you, or a snake is a protective totem. You can work with more than one spirit animal. So I'm going to link my snake spirit animal video up here that you can check into after you watch this. But even just so far... A few things that are really jumping out about Cecropia moth and its symbolism, wisdom, right? Because King Cecrops was this wise leader. And Athena, too, is a representative of wisdom, right? She's this wise goddess, right? Her symbol is the owl. There's another animal that you might connect to if you connect with Cecropia, right? Um, and it's also this uh, mastery of the intellect, Right. Remember also Athena. Remember, she sprang from the head of Zeus. OK, she's very intellectual and she's able to strategize. So if you if Cecropia is coming up for you, it may be an indication that um, even though and we're going to get into this later, um, this is a, a creature of the night and can have to do with deep emotions. But it also may be saying that, okay, well, emotions are important, but we also need to temper them with intellect, right? We need to be balanced. Um, and also to be able to overcome our base desires, our base urges, our um, natural instincts, and temper them with intellect and with strategy. Um, looking again at King Cecrops, um, that face with the tail, right? He's got those base urges, but they're topped with this um, beautiful king, right? Who is wise and good and uses his animal nature in a way that is aligned with his higher self, okay? Um, so this idea of balancing the animal nature and the instincts with the intellect. 
Okay, so let's move on uh, because the Zacropia has a deep, deep connection with the moon. If you look at the wings, it's got little crescent moon shapes on it. And of course, it, it's it's a night flying creature. And so working with Zacropia moth, you're going to be working with lunar or moon energy to one extent or another. Um, and this is going to be strong feminine energy. Okay. And when balanced, moon energy is really supportive. Okay. And you can be protective. And um, if this is really resonating with you, you might want to look up the grandmother moon teachings of um, the native from the from the Native American tradition, because um, learning to work with the moon is learning to work with our deep feminine nature in a way that is fully aligned again with spirit, with our higher self, right? And learning to um, manage and control one's femininity in a way that is honorable and that uh, contributes to life rather than detracting from it, right? Because all archetypes, including the masculine and feminine, do have both light and dark sides to them. So with Cecropia Moth, we want to be aware of that, right? And aware of how can it how can we work with these feminine energies? Whether you have a masculine body or a feminine one or whatever your identification is, we all have masculine and feminine energies, okay? And here the feminine is coming forward very strongly. So the moon gently illuminates, okay? And it instructs in the way of in the ways of rhythm and how to synchronize your personal rhythms with those of the earth and with those of the cosmos. Okay. So moon magic has a lot to do with time mastery, right? And in those cycles. And so if Cecropia moth is really strong with you, you might want to consider um where just really paying attention to the lunar cycle and this is whether or not you menstruate it doesn't matter but you, there's still going to be a cycle of the moon and you might want to really look into well what's appropriate for me and how do i feel at the time of the full moon versus the time of the new moon and in between um remember also that the moon does not shine with its own light right but it reflects the sun Okay. And when this is balanced and healthy, this moonlight is a very beautiful thing. The moon is able to diffuse bright light and distribute it gently. Okay, So if you're working with this totem animal, with Cecropia moth, you might be somebody who can reach people who are in darkness, right? And to bring them light who may not be ready or able yet to tolerate really direct light from the sun, okay? So you may be working with people who somehow may be traumatized or just some in some sort of inner darkness and be able to really connect with them gently, right? And bring that light in, whereas somebody who is more of perhaps a solar warrior type might not be able to, to um, work with these people very efficiently or effectively. All right, so, but we have to be aware also when moon energy is unbalanced, then it can have a false light quality, okay? Um, and this is the illusion that can be associated with the moon, right? Um, so it can shift and manipulate meaning, offering half-truths and innuendos. It can be quite manipulative, right? And the possibility for the misuse of sexual energy is very significant here, especially feminine sexual energy. So we really have to watch for this both in ourselves, right? Am I misusing my feminine sexual energy or am I, you know, am I using it to lead people on or to manipulate them as to sort of power plays, right? Even subtle power plays. Or are we not telling the full truth to ourselves, right? Or leading other people on. So many ways that this can show up. It's something we have to be really careful of. And even if you don't see it in yourself, it might be showing up in those around you. So really be careful of being led into situations where you're not being shown the full truth or that you're being kind of enticed into a situation, right? So a little more about false light. What false light energies are really good at doing is kind of driving you in circles, right? Driving you to distraction. It can feel like you're not making progress. So if you're feeling like you're not getting traction, 
whether it's in your life, in a relationship, in business, with your health, something like that. Um, see if you have been following false light opportunities or relationships or getting lost in fantasy, right? If it seems seductively attractive in any way, be aware it could be inviting you to waste your energy or your money on something that doesn't offer or won't deliver any real value, all right? So especially watch that fantasy because it's, it's really easy to fall into that fantasy trap. If what is being offered really aligns with our deepest desires, right? We want to be really aware uh, and again, bring that intellectual ability, the ability of our mind to temper and balance our emotions, okay? Um, colors and elements. Um, the Cecropia moth has beautiful patterns. And um, it's shades of gray and buff. And also, it's got this beautiful, deep, deep red, okay? This is a, a rich red-brown that, again, connects with that feminine energy. It's the color of the menstrual blood, um, and it's it's a very earthy color. It's very grounding. It's the color of the root chakra, right? And so if you have Cecropia moth as your totem or your personal spirit animal, um, you may have an earthy quality to you, even though like all butterflies and moths and even birds, things with wings, you're going to have a lot of that air element. You might enjoy anything having to do with communication um, in in the case of Cecropia moth, I'm getting a big, um, I'm getting a big download about music. You might be really drawn to music because it's a way of using that air element of communication, but also in a very kind of feminine, indirect, and very emotional way, right? So music might be really important to you, whether you're a musician or just really enjoy tuning into music. So both earth and air are going to be elements that are very resonant with the Cecropia moth. Um, it's important for you to maintain your relationship and your connection with Mother Earth, right? If you are working with this totem, um, Mother Earth will help you to stay grounded. You're going to want to pay attention to grounding, right? Um, and the moth could be showing up to tell you that even though you may be up in the ethers and having lots of spiritual experiences, again, it's important to be grounded and that you can be grounded and spiritual at the same time, right? Um, and this is especially if you've got all this air energy coming up. Uh, it is the element of communication and ideas, but the nemesis of air is, again, false light and fantasy and also pride, right? Um, so these are the um, some of the characteristics of the archetype of Lucifer, like the fallen angel, um, associated with pride and fantasy and losing one's grip on reality. So um, anything that you can do to ground yourself will help to stabilize and support your etheric and your astral bodies and keep you aligned to truth, right? So that you can effectively channel and work with the air element. You might be able to um, have the spiritual downloads. You might have medium ability. You might be able to um, have wonderful uh, dreams or ways to connect spiritually, but you really want to make sure that you are grounded. You really, really want to really hammer that home here with this totem. Very, very important. And also being grounded will help you communicate what you perceive or your ideas or spiritual concepts in ways that more earthbound people can understand. So you could be somebody who is able to become sort of a bridge between the spiritual world and the, the material world, right? Or the spiritual society and just regular society bring, bringing some of that beautiful spiritual light into regular everyday light, life, but in a really soft and gentle way, right? Like the moon that people can understand and connect with. So let's go on here um, and talk about the maple tree. Because the Cecropia moth has a relationship with the maple tree. It's the favorite food of this moth. Okay, um, Cecropia will also eat birch and cherry. Maple is a big, beautiful, and very protective tree. Okay, it provides sweet nourishment. It's a provider. 
as well as shade. Okay, so Cecropia can have to do with abundance or finding a situation or a person or something that will provide for you. There's some numerology associated with the maple tree as well. Okay, so the maple has five points on its leaves and five is a number associated with change. Okay, and so the maple also changes color very vibrantly in the fall. So it's associated with change. And any butterfly or moth will also have that association of transformation and change. The Cecropia moth, interestingly enough, um, the larva also goes through five sizes or five instars, okay, on its way to becoming an adult. So the number five is super important here, right? If you're working with this spirit animal, you may be entering a period of change, or you may just experience a lot of change in your life. Um, but have faith that you will be protected, right? And your needs supplied throughout any change that you experience. Just hold that thought, hold that faith. And also remember that change brings transformation. That's the real purpose of change. Okay, so even though change is scary, and again, the animal part of ourselves often doesn't like change, so we want might want to have to kind of work with ourselves and be like the the wise king to ourselves right and um, help ourselves through any change that we're going through by just telling ourselves it's all going to be okay you're going to be provided for and um things will be better right when we get through it but let's look at these five instars because this is a really interesting caterpillar the cecropia moth it changes starting from a black color to green and then a blue green and then it also has a lot of fancy pricky tubercles on its body of different colors like yellow and orange it's a really colorful character but that that transformation from this black into a, a, a green and then the blue green it's almost like it's coming up from the the black earth through the green layer, right, and up into the more uh, sky or canopy. It's a symbol not just of transformation, but of ascension, right, and of becoming more clear and uh, brighter colors, right, as you move forward. So I'm seeing a transformation here for this Kropi moth person from more of a, a dull or contracted existence to one that is much more expansive, open, full of light, full of color, um, this joyful, playful quality that the uh, caterpillar has, okay? And so looking at these decorations, right? Well, they are delightful to look at, but they may also serve a protective purpose, okay? Because they break up the attention of a predator so that it may not see the entire caterpillar for what it is, okay? So um, it may be hard for people to see the whole you. Um, that may actually serve you well, right? Because there are times where we don't want our whole, you know, our whole life or all our beliefs or whatever to be out there for everybody to see, right? We can, you know, kind of keep some things hidden and you may be able to kind of go through life and maybe have a secret side to you, right? But those people who can see through to who you are, the real you, there, there's a potential on one side that it could be somebody that wants to take advantage of you. So just be aware of that. But there's also a potential for somebody who really sees you to be a really super strong advocate, right? Um, and what's coming through to me really strong right now is especially in the romantic area, right? Thinking back to that idea of King Cecrops as introducing the idea of marriage, right, to the Athenians whose patron goddess is Athena, the goddess of wisdom, right? The wisdom of marriage, right? And choosing somebody who you know can really see through to who you are, but really paying attention to who that person is, right? If you are choosing that special someone, um, be aware that, that you can choose, and this is not a decision to make quickly or lightly, right? This person has the potential to be either your biggest detractor or your hugest advocate, right? And see, so we want to be really sure that this is a person that has your best interests in mind as well as theirs, because when you come together 
is marriage. You guys are a team, right? And you guys, um, when you find that that real um, strong marriage partner, um, you guys can really be a force for light. Um, but you want to make sure that you're it's a it's a dual support, right? That they're supporting you as well as you supporting them. Okay, so. Let's look at when the Cecropia caterpillar becomes an adult, right? It's gone through that transformation process. It's coming out as, as an adult. And this really represents the real you, right? The you that is really aligned with your higher self. Uh, we all go through this process, right? To shed all those kind of weird prickly things that that our personality puts on, right? Um, and, and come into our real selves. And once that's happened, um, for the Cecropia moth, the moth itself, it loses its ability to eat, right? It has no working mouth parts or digestive system. Wow. So what does that mean for us? Well, first of all, it's it's existing in order to create something, right? As an adult, the Cecropia moth exists in order to find a mate, reproduce, and then it will die. Um, but it leaves on the legacy of the next generation, right? Through the act of creation. So for you, you're creating something, right? In your life, just being present here. And for some of you, it may be creative projects. It might be building a um, an organization or a business. It might be building a family, whatever it is. It might be um, building a beautiful environment, or it could just be creating the best you that you can. And through that, creating a frequency that really helps and changes the world and is healing, right? So whatever it is, you, once you really align with your real self, with your true self, your higher self, you're going to have a legacy to leave, leave the world. So you might at some point in your life, if you if this is a um, strong totem for you, you might find that you experience a shift at some point. It may be midlife. It might be a little earlier. It might be late in life, but you could experience a shift most likely after five kind of uh, phases or periods of, of your life where you become fully focused on some sort of legacy work. Right. Um, and when this happens, you may find that you you need to let go of certain activities or relationships that once fed you, but no longer serve your best interests or your goals. OK. And at that point, just trust that you have everything that you need with you. So that's it for Cecropia Moth. If you've enjoyed this, I really would appreciate a share and a like. Um, and also, you can check out. We mentioned a couple other spirit animals. It was owl and snake that you might want to look into as well. You can find those in my spirit animal playlist, which is up here. And I'll also leave that in the description box below. Um, enjoy this beautiful, beautiful spirit animal. And remember, you were born to be free.